kidney failure, which affects about 600,000 people in this country, is treated either by dialysis or better, if you can get one, is a kidney transplant. Unfortunately, less than 10% of the people that need a kidney transplant can get one. There are just not enough organs available. I'm Shuvo Roy. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Bioengineering and Therapeutic Sciences. This is our lab, and we are working on an implantable bioartificial kidney to free the patients from the burdens of dialysis, provide them an improved quality of life, and hopefully, if we do this right, okay, we'll actually have something that's going to cost less than the current therapies today. Now, we know that the technology to get there exists. We're taking that infrastructure that California has become famous for, and we're applying it in a way that's not been applied before for medicine. I try to communicate the excitement that we're taking semiconductor technology and applying it to medicine in an unprecedented way. So a current dialysis machine is the size of a refrigerator, and the key component in that is a dialysis cartridge. There's about two square meters of surface area. To get the same amount of filtration, we need 1 20th in the silicon filter. So we take these membranes, cut them into little squares, we test each of the individual membranes for how do they perform in terms of filtration. We challenge it with water and particles in the water that are very small. And we see how much water comes out and what particles come out. And Steve here is basically helping test the performance of this filter in a little cartridge. This information then gets fed back to the people that are helping us on membrane design or people who are helping us on surface modifications. Uh, we'd like to make sure that blood doesn't clot in silicon. So here I work with Zohora to basically take the membranes we have and we can coat them with special molecules that make them blood friendly. 3D printing is a big step in sort of helping us prototype. And you can design different versions so we can look at it. Part of engineering is you gotta look and feel. Is the right size? Can a surgeon implant that? We're testing and optimizing each of those components individually. So we make them as best as they can be and then eventually bring them together. So what we have here is the prototype model. This is fake blood. Coming out here is our fake urine. In practice, we won't need a pump because the silicon membranes are so efficient that our body's own blood pressure will be able to drive the filtration. And I feel excited when you're making progress. When I hear from patients, when I hear from physicians, when I hear from students, when I hear from the other engineers that we can do this, look at the impact. There's 600,000 people who have kidney failure in this country, 2 million worldwide. Less than 20,000 transplants are performed every year. And on the waiting list today, which is the sickest of the sick, there are almost 100,000 people. If we can deliver on this, we can provide an alternative therapy and a treatment option that doesn't exist today for the vast majority of people who are now forced to rely on dialysis.